think he has a gun. Or a knife, I'm not quite sure yet. saying he might have a gun, but I'm, I didn't see a weapon in his hand. Officer's uh, weapons are pointing at this angle right here, and obviously we're behind a, uh, looks like a Mustang for cover, which isn't the best, but uh, it'll have to do. They're waiting for additional units, and then we got a group of people on the other side of the street who might be armed as well, who are involved in a uh, possible stabbing, I'm not sure, maybe a shooting, but our suspect here, it sounds like either he was stabbed or someone else was stabbed. The RA is standing by behind us, and uh, that's where right now we got units downrange, and um, we're uh, we're waiting for them to approach our uh, waiting for them to approach our suspect. This car is like really dusty, super dusty. Clearing uh, the fire department to come up, so they got him in custody. Still not quite sure. Still not quite sure what we have yet, but um, pretty uh, pretty serious response from LAPD. Normally, uh, normally we don't see that. Just on a uh, just on a guy who was either stabbed or what have you. So fairly uh, fairly uncommon. Definitely gonna want to talk with them and see what the see what the deal is. Again, not quite sure what the uh, what the story is here and why they why they had such a major uh, backup request. But um, again, we'll talk with the uh, with the sergeant over there. I think I've spoken to before, so we'll chat with him and see what uh, see what they have. But as of right now, it's just a agitated guy on the sidewalk. Uh, it again, it sounds like he was possibly stabbed. Um, they said he was suffering from a stab wound. I didn't see it. Um, from where we were and standing here right now, I don't see it right now. So um, they said, well, sorry, they said multiple lacerations, I think, right? So I, I don't, uh, again, I don't see it. Um, it. Looks like a homeless guy, so. Hey, the Taurus. Nice. <laughs> they're getting really rare. They're, they're uh, hard to, almost as rare as the Crown Vic, I would say, almost, almost. Sarge, is there a story here or is this just a homeless guy being... I just got here. Okay, no, I saw you roll up, but I, I figured I'd ask you. Uh, Nothing? What's with the response? I thought I was all excited. I was like, I was like... Guys, you're slow. <laughs> gotcha. All right, cool. I'll can it. Uh, hey, tell me about it. I'm not supposed to be working until nine anyways. Thanks, Sarge. All right, so... Uh, 
homeless guy obviously has a little cut to his arm um, not sure what the whole backstory is but just talk to the sergeant it's a big nothing so we're we're out of here <laughs> So uh, we've got um, a report of a fire, literally a block from where we are. Um, we're going to have to uh, pull a little maneuver here, though, to get over there. Um, let me see what we can do here. Loom up. Loom up. <laughs> Haven't heard that in a while. <clears throat> All right, so we've got a uh, LAFD reporting a loom up. There's a fire right here on Spring. I'm not sure. They're saying 690 North Spring. It's about a block, um, about a block and a half north of us right now. I just want to make sure I've got my bearings and we're looking at the right thing, which we are. Alameda and Maine is going to be our cross, and uh, yeah, it sounds like LAPD. Fire, first day, updated address 649 North Spring Street. 649 North Spring. 649 North Spring. Cool. Yeah, we're about a block away. It's a little bit further south than what I was thinking, but I mean we're right here. It doesn't matter. So. Here we are, uh, it's exposing, it sounds like an outside fire. Exposing, it should be right here. They're, yeah, they're blocking that direction and we're gonna come around the top side. Um, but it does sound like it's exposing a building and they're saying that there's explosions inside the building. So that's what we've got right now. We're uh, just rolling up. There's the first uh, first in, which is fours. And we're uh, we're trying to... Where it is. 536 and Brad to the 126 east and west of the Kimball for an 1183. It's possibly the stabbing suspect. We got fire, I'm assuming. I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's going. Oh, no, only one here by the name of yeah. Lydia. It's running up the side of the building. Another run here at Dodger Stadium for the light port. 20, we will take it. Yeah, you can hear the uh, the explosions. All right, let's get down there. Sergeant, good to see you. All right. Right now we've got a, looks like a two-story commercial. LAPD was saying they were hearing explosions inside. This building looks to be vacant. I'm not sure about the building to the south. You can see we're just north of City Hall. LAPD got here. They shut down traffic. They're loading the lines right now, but it looks like we have fire deep in the building. We're already starting to come through the roof, too. You can see that. Guy's trying to move his Tesla. Four of the fives, code six. I got a, a two-story. Looks like a vacant, and I got. Uh, I already got fired through the roof, exposing a three-story commercial or correction uh, residential over commercial to the south.
set up the tape, but in a couple of minutes, you're going to have to be on the other side of the tape. It's a crime scene? It is a crime scene. It's like a fire. They saw somebody jumping out of the out of the Oh, like an arson thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. We got a couple we... more minutes. Okay. We set up. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, let me... Okay. Hey, Sarge. Sarge, are we good on this side of the street? Because he's saying it's a crime scene, possibly. We're gonna, we're, yeah, we're going to set up some tape here. Okay. Uh, just behind the uh, fire truck. Got it. But I'm saying if we're on this side of the street, is that okay? Just, yeah, the just media? stay over here for right now. Okay, that's we fine. Get the drop, drop seat up, yeah, no worries. We just want to make sure you're all safe. No, I understand. Thank you. So they're saying that they saw an arsonist jumping out of the building. Um, if that's the case, that's fine. I just know that this thing's going to go. This thing's going to go for sure. I want to get. Oh, we're getting water on it. Thanks, Sarge. Yeah, because it's... What's that? Sarge said we're good right here. I got him. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Sarge. Did you guys... Uh, do you have a suspect description yet? We got nothing. We, we, all we know gotcha. is one of my officers was driving around. They saw smoke. Got it. Okay. Yep. They might lose this, by the way. You can see it's already in the back. And is this building uh, vacant, or is anybody there? I'm not even sure yet. all out. Yeah, gotcha. Thank you. So... Again, our, the big issue right now with what we've got here, you can see it glowing on the top. It means that we have fire in the, in the attic space in the roof. We're not sure if the building to the south is occupied or not, uh, but once you have fire in the attic like that, it can get to the wall on the building to the south because they're connected, and then it can get through that partition into that three-story, and then we've got a serious problem. But as of, uh, as of right now, I'm not sure how big this is gonna get. Even if we get kicked back to the tape, and we go for this uh, this parking lot over here, then we should be okay, because we'll have a, a decent visual further north with the fire coming out of the roof. So, not uh, not the worst spot. We might end up moving down the street too. So we're in a we're in a decent spot right now. But look at the glowing. I don't know if you can see. It. Let me zoom in on it so you can see it. But the entire roof, the ceiling upstairs on the second floor, is glowing. Trying to get the uh, the fire truck move. Nice. Yeah, I, I think they're gonna have a they're gonna have a rough time with this. Should I get my tripod? Should I not get my tripod? And look at how long the building is too. From this angle, you can see it's it's going all the way to the uh, to the west here. Probably about another uh, another couple hundred feet. We got really, really dark. <laughs> We've got really dark smoke uh, on the uh, on the side, right near that three-story. So uh, they've already laddered the roof over there, and I I'm not sure if they're going to stay. It looks like they might be coming off the roof now. So we'll see what they uh, what they end up doing. We got truck uh, truck 10 rolling in uh, with their ladder, and we're probably they're probably going to set up for ladder pipes if I had to guess the way that they're positioning. We've already got another truck uh, to the west, and it looks like they might be uh, they might be rolling ladder pipes on this. So we'll see. I 
kind of want to grab my sticks, but I also kind of don't. If they load that, that's going to yeah. be exciting. <laughs> All right. I'm, I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm kind of on the fence right now. No, I'll get my, I'll get my sticks. Let's do that. Obviously, we have a, a good fire in the attic on the uh, on the second floor in the primary fire building. It looks like uh, engine three has laddered the three-story. Oh, amazing shot! We've got the fire going, and we've got the U.S. Bank building directly behind it. You can see the heat waves coming up. It's so intense, but uh, it looks like they've got a line on the roof, and it, they're going to probably try and take it from there. We'll see what they uh, we'll see what they do, but we do have a line on the roof right now, and that's a good uh, that's a good place for it. So once they load it, and you can hear the saw work going on behind me, once they load that line on the roof and they get some some water directly on the fire, it's going to be a much better uh, they're going to be in a much better position. It doesn't look like it's jumped that wall. My my main concern, and I'm watching while I'm talking to you guys, my main concern here is that that fire gets through the attic and makes it into that other building, that adjacent building. That's a three-story apartment. So that's an entirely different ball game if they, uh, if they actually were able to get, or sorry, if the fire was able to jump through that, uh, through that wall. But usually, it is cinder block, it's filled with concrete. Um, it's it's kind of difficult to get through unless you have uh, conjoining air ducts or something like that. So, wow, they're really going to town over here with these saws, holy cow. Guy's just cooking those blades. I think he's gone through his second saw. All right, looks like they're getting water on it from the top. And they're sending the uh, ladder up, so. Well, that's a good start. It looks like they got some water directly on the fire in the uh, in the attic there. And look at this guy, he's going to the moon right now. Check that out. He is out of here. LA City Fire had a quick knockdown. Uh, started as a two-story commercial building, vacant. Um, probably about, just looking at it, I'd say about 30 feet wide, but it is deep. This thing goes back. I'm assuming that there's a, there's a break in the middle where they're cutting the door. I'm assuming that's another building on the adjacent street. Um, but uh, really uh, interesting fire when we got here. We had the whole sign going, uh, which is usually usually indicative of uh, arson or some type of accelerant being used, unless, unless there was a uh, fire in the sign out front. But usually on abandoned uh, buildings like this, um, the buildings are, uh, the power's turned off, right? So the gas and the power are off. You don't have to, you don't usually see a, a sign, facade sign uh, fire on a building uh, like this. The big concern we got here, obviously, was that three-story apartment building, which might also be abandoned as well to the south. Uh, Again, you get fire through that partition. That's this is a whole different story. This now we're looking at that part of the building and the back part. Um, we do have what appears to be a good knockdown. I'm seeing white uh, steam, not heavy black smoke. Once you see that on a fire like this, and LA City Fire's got it contained, 
at that point, it's not really going to go anywhere. They've got to the seat of the fire. They hit it from the roof, from the front, from the back. I mean, there's nowhere for it to go. Not to mention, we got two ladder pipes up, which is unbelievable. These guys are so fast. So that's right right now. We don't have an official cause. We'll probably find out later. We'll give it over to the, uh, to the wire, the city's wire. They'll do a workup for us, and then we'll find out uh, exactly what happened. My guess, 60% is leaning toward arson because some of the cops were saying that, but they're also saying it because they didn't want us to be where we were. So you have to kind of take that with a grain of salt. They're saying, oh, it's arson, but it's like, well, is it really arson? Or are you just saying that because you don't want me here filming? Uh, that's where we're at with this. Again, we'll find out 100% in probably a couple hours. So that's what's going on. chasing uh, a possible fire in the Hollywood Hills right now. We're on Sunset Plaza. You can see the homes around here are, uh, this is like the Hollywood Hills area of the rich and famous of Los Angeles. Um, we have a helicopter overhead and we're trying to figure out where this fire is, but we have um, multiple. All right, so they have an airship overhead right now. We've got a fire yeah, in this area. Over, uh, Hollywood, oh. uh, City 27. Are you over our fire? I'm trying to figure out. They're talking to a helicopter, and we're trying to figure out. Hey, Hollywood for the fire department. Negative. That is not a LAPD air. I believe that's the media. You want that's me to, the media. Uh, really yes, I think there's a news chopper overhead. We're trying to figure out. Uh, negative. Thank you. We got one of our airships inbound. Thank you. Okay, so the media helicopter is over it. Sorry. So there's a media air helicopter over it, and I can't figure out where this is, but they can see it, obviously, from where we are. Uh, the battalion is heading up Evanview right now. We're above the staging location, which is south of us at Sunset Plaza and Rising Glen. So we're just coming up to Evanview. Um, the battalion just made a left, so we're going to do the same. And we're... Oh. Okay, they're confirming that is a news helicopter. I might actually have that. Hang on, on the radio, I might actually have that. I spoke with the local LED airship. It's not them. It's the media. <laughs> They're all disappointed. Roger. We're at 1504 view site. We do have rubbish on the balcony. 1504. The address again, 1504 view site. Yeah, got it. Yes, sir, we just caught that last bit about uh, locating uh, rubbish fire. Uh, what else? Okay, There's here's, no here's uh, uh, sevens. Uh, you can have a wrap. I don't want to get stuck down there too far. Is there an out? This is no. an exterior fire on a balcony. Okay. It's concrete. We have no extension. Oh, okay. Engine 41 can handle. Engine 41, Battalion 705, roger. Uh, well, we're here, so let's, uh, let's at least go check it out. 1504 is right down the street. It's on a concrete balcony. I, I just don't want to get stuck. Uh, over here because these roads are really small and once they start laying in we're kind of screwed so we're not going to go too deep we'll try flipping the uh, our unit around and, and getting in a position where we can uh, escape because <laughs> we don't want to be uh, we don't want to be stuck here so all the windows closed all right there goes uh that's the uh, battalion chief for la county fire battalion one and then uh city fire just passed us but the guy who saw the fire is way over there when we get back, I'll actually, I'll point out where he saw it from. It's like two miles away, which is not, well, maybe about a mile. We'll check on the map. All right, view site terrace. That's why the numbers didn't come back. All right, let's see if it's like under construction or something. Uh, I'll see what's going on. <clears throat> Looks like the homeowners just got here. They beat us. Yeah, it's funny, we smelled it earlier, and then uh, I didn't realize it would be this far away, but with the wind, I guess it makes sense. No. Yeah, it's either, it's either under construction or uh, they, left, uh, they left it 
like that, so. Really no access. Yeah, it's, it's under construction. All concrete, didn't go anywhere. That means nobody lives here that's, uh, that's uh, you know, a celebrity. So we're not gonna, we're not gonna shoot it. Um, just an accident that could have, you know, burned the whole canyon down. It's pretty windy up here right now. When we have winds like this and the Santa Ana start kicking up, um, that's when you see the, the big brush fires that we have here in California. And an unattended fire uh, on a balcony in the Hollywood Hills can just go. I mean, the wind speed, you can feel it just where we're standing, probably about uh, seven to 10 mile an hour gusts. Um, at that speed, the, the fire is gonna go that fast. Your ember cast is gonna go that fast. So uh, good thing they got it, good thing they got it out. But we drove all the way downtown to here, so I figured we'd at least look at it. Um, there was a crash on the 110, so if that's still there, we'll go check that out. But yeah, really dangerous um, fire burning on a balcony. But let's walk up there and I'll show you where the, uh, where the 911 caller saw it from. an interesting uh this might be a dwp uh building right here yeah it looks so uh interesting all right so this is where we parked obviously but uh let's see if we can take a look so the guy who called so tay if you look straight across uh, if you hold the camera up straight across the canyon over there that's where they saw the fire from. So they were, they were looking across, luckily, and they saw it. So quite a ways uh, to see that, actually. <laughs> so good on him. Paying attention and uh, doing, uh, doing good work. It's very nice. Very, very nice. <clears throat> very good. All right, so LAFD did a great job on this. Um, again, fire, anytime you have a fire in the hills or an area with a lot of fuel. I mean, we've got a house under construction right here. This thing would cook. Um, anytime you've got um, a densely, semi-densely packed residential area uh, like this with, um, with brush and stuff like that, that's when you have the potential for a large, um, a large brush fire. That's what the Thomas fire was. We had just a, a small start. With the, uh, with the power lines arcing, and then that then continued on and, and caused, uh, I think now today it's the second largest fire in California state history, but at the time it was the largest fire in California state history. So, you know, these things are no joke. Um, we take it very seriously, uh, native Californians, I guess you could say, um, but the fire department does a really good job. So LA City Fire, massive kudos, because they, uh, they got that out and located it faster than anybody else could. So we've got a shooting um, with what sounds like an off-duty sheriff's deputy that was at a 7-Eleven and there's multiple suspects. It sounds like there's a suspect down. LAFD is sending an ambulance um, for an unknown victim. And uh, I don't know the status on the sheriff's deputy. I'm assuming he's okay if he was armed, hopefully. Um, but we're heading down there right now. It's at like Sentinella and... Sentinella and Alvern is where it is. So we're, uh, we're heading down to that. And um, yeah, we don't really know what we have as far as victims. They haven't even cleared the location yet. So we're, I think they're waiting for an airship and some additional units. So we're gonna be there. Yeah, 14 FB40 is responding to 3 from Pacific Station in 9250, it's not there for alert. Okay, so, and they've got a, a report of a uh, shooting or shots fired near the airport. So. Two calls going on in Pacific right now. The one that we care about. Pacific for an additional shooting just occurred. Nine two five zero South Airport Boulevard. Okay. There's one on airport. Okay, so they're overhead at the 7-Eleven. Which, if you look uh, straight ahead, there's our airship. Cool. So LAPD airs overhead. Uh, we're going under Slauson right now. This is the uh, Los Angeles and Slauson which might as well be a freeway. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why they don't just call it a freeway at this point. But um, yeah, we're, we're gonna be there in uh, two seconds. They're gonna clear the location, see if we have victims or anything like that. We're gonna hang tight and kind of listen to the radio traffic. If it ends up being a big nothing and nobody's hit, and it's, well, even if nobody's hit, this is still kind of interesting because it's uh, potentially an off-duty sheriff's deputy uh, that was involved. 
So we obviously need to get uh, confirmation on that, but um, already a somewhat interesting story. We just need to uh, we just need to get confirmation on what we're on what we're hearing if it's legitimate or not. It should be down here to the right. So we yeah they did not clear FD to enter yet. They are still staging. Um, so we are in a uh, good position on this to get um, to get the shots that we need to tell the story. And again, we got units all over. There's the 7-Eleven. We're gonna set up probably across the street if we can. Uh, I don't wanna be, uh, let's see what's, yeah, let's see what's across the street. I, they got, oh yeah, there is a sheriff's deputy here. This might've been a deputy. Oh, wow, okay, so we got guys possibly in there. Okay, we wanna be, we wanna be way over here. <laughs> Holy cow. Rescue 14, remain available. All right. Engine 14, the rescue. This Engine looks, this looks pretty up. serious. So we're gonna use the car, uh, we're gonna use the car as cover, and we're gonna be right here. We might have suspects rescue inside, rescue. and this might have been a deputy involved shooting. So let's rescue get, uh, hey, 499, do me a favor. If you can, monitor Pacific and Southwest yeah, if you're rescue. able to. Um, we might have uh, suspects inside the, 7-Eleven currently, and I got sheriff's deputies here, uh, so this might be might be a DIS, but uh, we're gonna be out of the vehicle. I'll be on uh, comms. And Tay, just stay stay right there. You're in a good you're in a good spot. We're in a good spot right here. We got the car between us and where we think the uh, where we think the uh, bad guys are. So I think they're the workers or the uh, or they were inside at the time. So um, there was a security officer that just came by um, that I was talking to really quick. He was stating that when he came by earlier, he saw someone um, at gunpoint here uh, in front of the 7-Eleven and he didn't know if it was security or the sheriffs or what have you. So I'm not sure if it's off duty. Um, it could be a security guard. It could be off duty uh, sheriffs that were there. Uh, all I know is everyone's grabbing uh, AR-15s and shotguns right now. It looks like we've got... Uh, yeah, they just grabbed the 12 gauge. Um, this might meet SWAT criteria if they can determine that the uh, suspects are inside the 7-Eleven still uh, and armed. That, that would meet SWAT criteria. So um, this is a legitimate, where's that guy going? There's a guy on his cell phone up there in the, on the top, you see that? Yeah, he's up on, that, on the side of that fence. Oh, okay. To make a U-turn. So everyone's got rifles and shotguns um, pointing to the 7-Eleven right now. We've got a, a car. Uh, looks like units have surrounded the uh, entire block already. We're in a great spot, by the way. I, I love that we're. We're a little bit further away from all the insanity and we're behind all those ballistic doors. This is a, a good spot, not to mention the, uh, the Taurus. Imagine they shot up the car, I'd be so upset. I'd be very sad. I would say, what do we do about this bullet hole in the car? <laughs> that would not be cool. So uh, yeah, they've got everybody uh, set up here uh, outside. And again, we're not 100% sure if our suspects are still in that 7-Eleven. Um, looking at the response that we're getting with the fire department standing by, um, a mix of LAPD and LA County Sheriff's, um, it would be probably a safe bet to say that there's there's armed suspects in that building. So we're gonna find out in the dramatic conclusion right here on Code 20. Thank you again for joining us on this uh, insane adventure that we call that we call Code 20. Um, every week we have a new episode. Every week.
Crazy. Alex is editing overtime, all the time, overtime, and uh, he's doing an incredible job, Tay, behind the camera. Huge shout out to Tay. Um, filming the filming, Filmception, right? Is that it? Yeah. So I think we're gonna be here for a while. Oh, more shotguns. More, sh everybody's got a shotgun. You get a shotgun, everybody. So. Oh, they're asking for even more units. So, um, yeah, we'll see what they end up doing. If they go in there and try to clear it, um, they're going to need a shield, obviously. And uh, I would think it would be a SWAT call out, but um, it, re it really depends on what information they have and how concrete it is. So. We've got, uh, looks like LAPD, um, LAPD just made entrance to the 7-Eleven. Um, if anybody is in there, I mean, they went in there with uh, with shotguns on point. So it's, uh, if there's anybody in there that's armed, it's gonna be a problem. But um, again, this did come out as, as a shooting. Um, Sorry, I'm listening to the radio. Um, this came out as an ambulance shooting, so that means that LA City Fire is responding um, with the uh, medical component, which is their rescue ambulances. Um, this uh, did come out like that, so the we have reason to believe that there is a victim here. Um, who that victim is, I'm not 100% sure, but uh, again, they are staging. If they release them, uh, then we know that there's no, uh, there's not gonna be an issue. Um, with there being a victim down inside, obviously. Or, well, if they are, they will call them in if there is a victim and they're critically wounded, uh, I should say gravely wounded. This sheriff deputy with the rifle is like nuts, by the way. This guy is intense. Really good. He's got like a great spot. He's got a cinder block wall and he's got his, uh, he's got his rifle all set. Um, but yeah, if they, if they go in and they pronounce and they come out without anybody, then, you know, we might have a fatal shooting on our hands. So um, again, we're gonna have to wait for everything kind of mellow out. Um, and then we'll talk with uh, we'll talk with the uh, Pacific supervisor, LAP supervisor that's here, and then we'll find out what the real story is. But as of right now, they're clearing the 7-Eleven. They're they're deep in there, um, and we're uh, we're still waiting to find out what we have. But yeah, we'll find out uh, we'll find out in a moment. I don't think they I don't think they found anybody. It looks like they're still inside clearing possibly. They might, they might have gotten to a locked door is kind of the uh, the vibe that I'm getting right now because they're talking to the guys that, that were outside. Uh, I don't know if it's the owner or uh, the manager or, or one of the workers, but they're talking to him right now and he's explaining I can see by his hand movement, he's explaining inside the store and they're asking him some questions. So they might have they might have gotten to a locked door or something like that. I am shocked they did that without a shield, by the way. That's, uh, they usually use a shield. <laughs> so that was, uh, that was fairly interesting, but hey. They think they got a victim down, so. They're going in there, they're gonna find out. Chinesb 40, Roger, I'll put it out for further. Closure Pacific, stand by 14 of B40, go ahead with the crime broadcast information. All right, let's hear it. Here's what uh, he's gonna tell us what happened. Chinesb 40, are there any of you who are shots fired? The end of the building occurred approximately 10, 15 minutes ago from his address. So just name out of clinic. All right. 
So, doesn't sound like we have a victim Roger. currently. Fortunate B48, Roger. Will your business is clear? It doesn't sound like we have a victim currently. They're going to check that I back room. We're, going now. Like, we're in their last room. We appreciate the help. All right, they're in the last room. There's no uh, no one inside. So it sounds like we had a, a ADW, with a, which is a assault with a deadly weapon uh, call. Uh, suspects, a uh, male Hispanic, came inside, fired uh, a single shot, and then fled the location. So there was a prowler complaint, though, literally down or up the street, I should say. Um, a prowler? Uh, prowler is uh, when someone hears like someone in their backyard running around or on, on uh, private property late at night. Um, Usually they're casing buildings and stuff like that, but uh, this um, this appears to be a uh, just an ADW shooting. I, I don't know. They were talking about the sheriff's being involved in this somehow. I mean, th I, I think this is LAPD's area. There could be a jurisdictional thing here where on one side it's the county, one side it's the city. I'll have to check my maps to uh, make minutes, sure. But um, Okay. I heard that call on the way down that, what was it, 90250? Yeah. Airport? Yep. Or, sorry, 9025? That's another call for a shooting, and it's matching the same suspect description on airport. I wonder if it's, is that at a 7-Eleven, do you think? Airport and Westchester? I wonder. If that's a 7-Eleven, we're going over there. Come on. The only thing I have right there is a Hilton on airport. Okay, we're coming out. They're coming, they're coming out right now. <clears throat> Clean up before you, airport police, they're not responding and they do not have anyone in custody. Okay, so... Coming out, right, look at, uh... Call location here, broadcast it, please, for us as well. Nobody in custody. Uh, it looks like they may have gone out the emergency door, but the uh, primary unit's going to address that with the uh, shop clerk. All right. So the guy, it sounds like the guy got up. Westchester. Westchester and airport. Roger. So it sounds like our guy. I can answer four, five, four, nine and a half, West and then suspect GO. Cool, suspect GOA. So, wow, no one, uh, no one hit. Uh, just a single shot fired in the 7-Eleven. I think the sheriff's deputies must have been here or something because Yeah, they just they just put out the code for so um, They had the shooting here and then right around I think while we were coming down there was another shooting dispatched on airport and uh, That went to airport PD because it was in such close proximity to LAX um, That's funny FD's cleared, no victim. Uh, you know, it, it's kind of a, uh, it's a tough sell. Um, I, I can try and write it up, but it's definitely a, uh, it's definitely a tough sell as a story. It's just, uh, you know, what we heard and then what we saw and, and what we now know, things always evolve, right? That's why you'll hear a lot of times at press conferences, especially they'll say it's a really fluid scene or it's a really dynamic incident. Um, and this is what they're referring to. So a lot of times you'll have uh, something where you think it's one thing and then the more information you get, you go, well, not quite, uh, not quite what I thought. So it is what it is, but no, uh, oh, they got crime scene tape they're gonna put up, that's cool. But no, uh, nobody in custody, no victims, nada, 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 nada. Okay. So, um, sorry, I got a little turned around. So we're going to head down. Uh, we'll head down La Tierra, take a look, see what's going on. They did put up... Um, they did put up crime scene tape, so obviously forensics is going to come out and take a look at what went down over here. Also, just shooting at a 7-Eleven, I mean, they've got like some of the best security systems, uh, camera systems, I should say, in the world. So, 
Um, not sure. You can take a look here. Take, to your right. So this is the uh, insanity that just went down. So yeah, they've got the uh, tape up. And yep, that's what's up. So we're gonna head down. Um, God, if security was there, they must have drawn down on the guy and then he, right? Or they were out of the building or something. I'm sure we're gonna find out more about it, but pretty uh, pretty intense situation. But we're gonna head down, see what airport uh, police have, if anything at all. Uh, it sounds like Pacific Division is sending two units um, down this direction over to, uh, over to Airport Boulevard. So we'll at least drive by, see if they're holding a crime scene, looking for casings, stuff like that. If they do, and it's the same suspect, that's 14 of B40 per 14070 unit will be clearing shortly from Sentinella and be responding to airport for canvassing. Okay, so they're they're just going to canvas. They're not um, unless they find something. Listen, they could show up and go, "Hey, there's like a stack of bullet casings over here." But interestingly enough, we did hear that shooting. 14 and um, route to Auburn. We did hear that shooting while we were coming down here. The reason um, we didn't respond to that one, we, we went to the 7-Eleven, was that um, there were reports that there was possibly um, a victim down on the uh, on the 7-Eleven uh, that we were just at. So obviously you've got no hit shooting and then shooting with a victim. That's going to be a a pretty easy uh, choice somewhere <laughs> where you're going to go and invest your time. So. We're gonna head down to see what they have by the airport, and then um, on the way back, I guess we'll just we'll keep going down to the uh, 105, and we'll take that back. It's always about the freeways, isn't it? It's like a big, uh, big freeway thing. All right, 455 is gonna be clear from uh, the 7-Eleven shooting, heading down to uh, airport and Westchester. Uh, Possible reports of a shooting in that area with the uh, same suspect. 455 is en route to check it out. Alrighty. You see the units here. So we're down at the, uh, at the, I don't even know what motel this is. Super creepy though. It looks abandoned, but there's like people in there. It's bizarre. The whole outside of this thing looks just funky. Look at the funk. The level of funk in this place. Check it. Man. What do you think? <clears throat> Should we, uh... 7017 at 10 and 12, 6, 9 and Western, 6, 9 and Western. Female, the location, male are arguing in the background. So 3, 4, 4, Have we invested too much time into this call? That's the real question. 3, I don't feel like it's anything, honestly. The shooting at the 7-Eleven, there's more to it. This one with all the people hanging out, nothing going on. Eh, probably, probably not. Is it related? Eh. Same suspect description, but the clothing didn't match, I don't think. We're here, I'm, in, I'm just gonna B-roll it really quick. I don't know if you wanna jump out, but I'm just gonna B-roll it and then we'll, um, then we'll clear off. You know, I don't always uh, get the chance to talk about it, but I got to say, this is one of my favorite views in the city. It's the uh, 105 eastbound to the 110 northbound. During the day, you can see all the way up to Mount Wilson. You're way up in the air. I think I think we looked it up the other day. What was it, 100 and 200 feet? Something crazy. So you can see all the way into downtown, and then when it snows in the winter, and it's really windy, and we get the Santa Ana's going, you can see all the snow on the mountain, um, it's it's a beautiful view, and at night it's gorgeous. I mean, you're you're up in the sky, looking looking into downtown, and the people who see that are uh, people who are coming off of the uh, uh, the airport transition road. So if you have more than one person in your car, uh, you can take the HOV, and um, you know, or if you have fast track like we do, you can take the, uh, the HOV section or the fast track lanes, and you can get that view. I, to me, it's like one of the best views in the city outside of obviously the Hollywood Hills looking to the south, but looking to the north, that is one of the coolest views that you can get. So, kind of cool on the Grand Circle Tour tonight.
All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of Code Two Zero. Again, new episode every Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Again, if you made it this far in the video, chances are you're a subscriber. We appreciate your support. Not to mention the members who will get to watch this episode a week early. Uh, probably more sometimes. <laughs> but again, you guys are incredible. Thank you for watching. And that's it for this one. See you next time.